Thanks a lot, Jean. Well, I would like uh, to thank uh, the Chamber of Commerce to give me the opportunity to provide you this talk today. It's a subject uh, that is close to my heart, um, and uh, I uh, cherish to discuss uh, any time um, about it. I'm just going to make sure that uh, I time it so I don't go out over time, <laughs> um, because. Uh, I can be very passionate about it. <laughs> so, um, I would like to, uh, to thank uh, everyone for coming. Welcome to uh, the fourth industrial revolution. It's happening right here, right now, uh, despite uh, the fact that the uh, present makes us think that we're living in the past. Uh, we actually um, closer to what we was reading in science fiction books uh, than, um, than we was before. So, so our company, Freelance Robotics, we provide different products and services. One uh, which is uh, for manufacturing, where we automatize a factory from A to Z and integrate robots. Um, that can go up to smart factory, which is the fourth industrial revolution where you have a totally automatized flow. The other things uh, we provide as well is uh, uh, custom products. So it can be a robot, it can be sub things from a robot, like uh, mechanical IT software, um, artificial intelligence software as well, uh, and uh, PCB boards, control system, and so forth. We have uh, started recently as well to uh, provide uh, certain products like uh, the Sendbot uh, that we are the sole uh, distributor in Australia. These as well uh, different other um, products that we are suppliers such as uh, universal robots that are collaborative arms where you don't need all the safety fencing around which is as well something from the first industrial revolution where, which will come more and more in a play. So where, where um, the industrial revolution has started, well, <coughs> in uh, 1780, and it's all links between um, social and job um, behavior, industrial revolution, uh, it's not just industrial, it's actually uh, not far from uh, <laughs> French revolution and things like that, and it's because these are some links as well towards it. The thing is, um, technology have impacted us those last 250 uh, years in a dramatic way that have really changed human behavior and spaces. So we ended up to be able to modify ourselves through our own environment, which is kind of uh, dissociate us from the other animal already. Um, the first industrial revolution uh, started with a breakthrough of uh, um, technology, which is uh, the steam engine. Steam engine have allowed to do um, rotary motion and linear motion for motors. So there was a kind of the first motors and that have allowed to automatize systems already going from uh, basin and uh, lord type of uh, population to uh, new uh, society, um, gender, which, like society group, which is uh, 
um, the labor and the bourgeois and uh, the traders that have grown more and more from it. From that, um, a lot of job change and uh, you would have uh, all the horse works, horsemen that um, got replaced and as well uh, um, blacksmiths and things like that started to get replaced as well. Then the second industrial revolution, um, it uh, was um, the breakthrough was uh, electricity and uh, the electrical motors. This have a uh, totally shift again um, the what was previously. And so a century later, basically most of the works that got created from the first industrial revolution, like maybe seventy percent of them get replaced again. And you have again better standard of living and all that, like as we can going to see in different way of living. Um, the last one that we have all noticed, uh, the third industrial revolution was uh, around 1970, and uh, that with uh, uh, computers, and that's about to get those uh, electrical motors that are was much more compact than steam engine, uh, to be able to behave in a much more complex and sophisticated way, be able to get a uh, sensor and interpret uh, the input and um, output accordingly to it, and it's really that's where uh, robotics uh, really started. So uh, actually, robotics is part of the third industrial revolution. To be, to be frank, <coughs> the thing is, um, from from there, uh, as you can see, internet's got developed. Uh, we get more and more technology all around us. Um, and uh, what's make ready the fourth industrial revolution, if there's one word that can sum up the fourth industrial revolution, is connectivity. And that's get beyond that, and as I'm going to show you, there's a lot of examples of technology uh, that are maturing nowadays and uh, make, make that possible and make this fourth industrial revolution coming slightly quicker than the previous one. Here, uh, at the bottom, you can see basically uh, the rate of productivity increasing as the technology increase of each industrial revolution. So, as I was saying, connectivity. Uh, connectivity, it's not just connectivity of uh, the machinery. Uh, together. First industrial revolution is actually connectivity between human interaction and uh, think about it like we are all um, neural, uh, neural in a neural network where we all are doing our little task and basically all together we are creating um, the society of humanity um, which is uh, now spread worldwide and totally connected worldwide. So, what I've created that is internet and what we call nowadays internet of things. I think there is an expectation of uh, by 2020 that there is uh, 3 billion devices connected uh, and interacting between each other. So. And all that is source of, of, of information. So, um, first industrial revolution is as well large amount of data and how to be able to process them <coughs> to extract uh, important information from it. There is uh, so many uh, fields that uh, are uh, related to it. And um, if you look at your business as well, it's the same thing. Nowadays, um, it's more than important than ever to be able to create an ecosystem, dis discuss with everyone, um, put down the old boundary, even actually working with competitors uh, to um, strive in this new world because uh, the challenge is not the same than before uh, and uh, it's more about um, having uh, the right information at the right time and be connected to the right person at the right time. 
So here uh, is an uh, example from 1840 to uh, 2010. So basically, it's cover about two uh, industrial revolution and half. And um, you can see the distribution of labor force uh, by sector. So this, as we know, three main sectors of work. Uh, one is agricultural, the, the first one. The second one is industrial and the second one is services. And as you can see, um, from uh, early on, agricultural was huge and a lot of people was uh, working uh, in the countryside. And then uh, people started to slowly come into the city, created the industry. Industry uh, was providing a need for services which grow at the same scale of industry initially. And then around 1920, um, the services started to fly off further and industry started to stagnate a bit while agriculture was really in a free fall. Not that uh, agriculture doesn't exist, it's just agriculture is one of the first places that got replaced more and more by machinery uh, and uh, a lot of labor that was done previously by many people to harvest and all that are done by machinery. And the first one was tractors, right? And now we arrive at a time where you see that the industry start to decrease and services keep going. And so that's kind of uh, showing that what we call the labor class uh, kind of disappear a bit, like uh, um, it's have happened to many other jobs and converted more in services. What does that mean for manufacturing companies and all that? It, it means that um, basically the fact that they make a product it's uh, just a, a side thing. It's like it's like when you you get your brochure. It's a side thing. Well, what all the concentration about it will be? It's uh, the experience of the customer, uh, how you present your products and and how you distribute it. It will not matter anymore where you build it. It will matter um, more uh, about um, how you present it, how you have the contact with human and as you're going to see a lot of the new work area are um, into the social in, uh, interaction and non-repetitive stuff. Here it's a um, kind of uh, summit of uh, where the main area of uh, work will be. So, office and administrative, manufacturing, production, uh, all those kind of things. But as you say, see, uh, mainly services. Art, design, entertainment, sport and media uh, still look a bit small there, but um, actually going to increase uh, much more. Um, and Eugène would be glad that uh, Legal going to do well as well, eh? <laughs> but um, yeah, so th this is um, quite an interesting kind of panel of type of uh, job that you can uh, imagine or cannot imagine that will come. So to give you an idea of what could be possible, like here's uh, some. Uh, top uh, skills that seem to be uh, more and more in vogue. And so like complex problem solving, critical thinking, creativity, people management, coordinating with others, emotional intelligence, judgment and decision making, service orientation, negotiation, cognitive flexibility. And as well, you can see that the skill disruptions uh, is um, spread around the different type um, of uh, country and um, as well uh, distributed in a type of industry. Financial services and investors, basic infrastructure, mobility, all those kind of things going 
to um, be quite uh, famous. Of course, uh, information and communication technology, professional services, energy, consumer health, media, entertainment, and information. So as, as you can see, <coughs> that shows you that it's, it's not like you remove job <laughs> and don't replace it, right? Um, it's like Lavoisier was saying, uh, uh, nothing is lost, uh, uh, nothing uh, disappears, everything is transformed. Um, and here is the case again, this new job going to be created, it's just about getting, as you will see later, um, our education properly trained to get uh, the youngers to um, assimilate to those jobs and the olders to be able to adapt to the technology and make the best of their skills. And um, it's not just a theory, right? Um, Germany did it. Actually, they have a rich full employment. And, um, there's an interesting curve up there. That's, uh, I like it because <coughs> it kind of breaks uh, the common fear that people think that robots steal their job. Um, if you look at the German automotive industry sector, you look at the curve of uh, the integration of robotics, which is in blue, uh, inside German automotive sector, and how many people they have employed. The curve is almost um, following each other, and actually, uh, they started to employ more people <coughs> as they were integrating more robots. And it's not a surprise, it's, uh, it's because Germany have invested in all those digital technology already 20 years ago. So, of course, if we sit uh, back and um, do nothing, uh, we just would become a third world country. And that's happened to a lot of countries going from a first world country to a third world country because they didn't take the wave. Right? And Germany is a great example because now Germany, they still have the high quality, but as well as they're competitive around the world. They can sell their product everywhere to uh, a price that is acceptable everywhere. <laughs> because they have been able to put down the cost of production through robotics. And so they employ more people because they have more demand. So, let's see. Please, be nice. So then, for the disruptive uh, technology, as Again, there's always a disruptive technology. What's interesting uh, in um, the first industrial revolution is that uh, there's many of them. And here is a sample of some, so autonomous robots, <coughs> simulation, system integration, internet of things, cyber security as well with a big cone, and um, you have as well a chain block. I don't know if you heard about all that, but uh, that's going to become a standard about being a transfer system. Soon we will not have all those plastic cards in our wallet anymore. Uh, maybe some of you start already to pay uh, things by phone and one day you would have what they call smart tattoos and uh, you would be able to program it to open your, your car door I mean, in some days, like in three, four years. <laughs> it's not very far. Um, uh, and, uh, and you will be able to to yeah, uh, program it to pay, pay wave, <laughs> get at the petrol station and say, yeah, uh, here we go, yep, up, <laughs> goodbye. So yes, uh, there, there's uh, a lot of things uh, going on and I, I will show you uh, that. So uh, I heard uh, not long ago <laughs> about uh, this term, uh, zeitgeist, uh, probably don't say it properly, but um, I think it was really relevant of the uh, conversation of today. Um, I put um, the uh, media wiki um, definition, Wikipedia, sorry. So the, the Zeitgeist, spirit of the age or spirit of the time, is a dominant set of ideals 
and believes that motivate the action of the member of a society in a particular period of time. And that's what happened to all of us. And everybody gets his period of time depending on each generation and uh, the motives is what have led us here today and that will propel, propel us uh, in the future as well. And so our action, the way we live, is actually um, our creation of the future and we choose that. So many change in the horizon <laughs> and um, like here is some example from the, econo the World Economic Forum where they have uh, asked about uh, 800 uh, technology executive experts about what's coming up. Right? And uh, there's some tipping points they say that will occur around 2025. For instance, uh, sorry, I'm going to sneeze. <laughs> for, for instance, 10% uh, ten, ten better. Uh, Ten percent uh, of people uh, wearing clothes uh, connected to the internet. So you would have clothes connected to the internet. Yeah, you heard well. Yeah. <laughs> um, so you don't have to get a, a navy phone anymore. You can look at your screen. <laughs> um, the first uh, robotic pharmacy in the U.S. Uh, so that's the percentage, like ninety-one percent, eighty-six percent. The first three D printed car in production. And about 84% of change that's happened by 2025. Pretty cool. 5% of customer production printed in 3D. And 90% of the population with regular access to the internet. Drive less car equaling 10% of all cars on the US. Actually, you will see uh, soon there is actually uh, cars that have been permitted in California to be able to drive, drive uh, wireless, uh, no, sorry, driveless um, from Audi. Yeah, the first uh, transplant of a 3D printed liver. That can be useful, especially when we grow old and we like to drink. <laughs> well, good, good news, uh, there is about 76% of change that happened by 2025. So. Um, yeah, over 50% of the internet traffic uh, to home for appliance and device. And the f so that means that we will use our home as the network and uh, instead to use a really expensive infrastructure. It's all good news because actually uh, technology makes us ecologic. So that's make happy both world, especially that it's profitable as well. So. Um, economic people will be happy too, so I think uh, it's like a, a good uh, way to have peace <laughs> with all those politician uh, disagreement, <coughs> political disagreement. Over, uh, so the, the first city with more than 50,000 people and no traffic light, how good will be that? Let's keep the roundabout guys. <laughs> <laughs> Um, the first artificial intelligence uh, machine on a corporate board of directors. How would you feel that uh, if your boss will be <laughs> a computer? <laughs> yeah, well, uh, alpha chance <laughs> by uh, 2025. So here are some technology examples. So I show you that uh, <coughs> is responsible of all this disruption. Is it not technology? It's actually not new anymore. It's about uh, 17 years old. <laughs> um, uh, here you can see a little uh, GIF animation of a gearbox uh, of, uh, made by, with atoms. Right? And so all the little uh, balls there, they are atoms. And uh, this is a progression of nanotechnology where uh, you get uh, pass passive nanostructures, so like um, um, different structure, and, and then get them active, so making like motors and things like that. Get systems in 2005, 2010, so that, that means um, <coughs> getting things in machine, like, like this gearbox. And then um, molecular nanosystem, and that's uh, um, quite crazy because um, it's, um, it's almost actually have a 
complex little robots that can go at a nano level around. Which that means that <laughs> they can go in your arterial. That, that's not a subway sandwich. It's a <laughs> it's actually uh, a, 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 a cut. Uh, um, of an arterial where, uh, yeah, they will be able to um, repair cancer cells, uh, take off uh, all your antioxidant, no need to take pills anymore. <laughs> you get um, as well uh, all the different uh, type of repairs that uh, you could have control, um, clean, clean your, your heart, uh, do local uh, operation cancer, of course, uh, tumor removal, it's a big one. I like this example as well about um, um, uh, prothesis. Um, here now uh, they use um, an applicator of the prothesis which is connected to electrodes that uh, with a little operation you get connected to your brain and you recover sensory. Um, Feeling. So this person uh, that uh, drink a bottle of water, they call that the, the Luke arm from Star Wars. <laughs> uh, and so yeah, he can manipulate the arm through his brain, and uh, he can they can start to work on uh, be, uh, coming uh, <coughs> to be able to have some feelings, and that's through the electrodes, as you can see with the picture and the button with the guy that still have his arm he can um, simulate his motion through to, to a robotic arm and so, so other amazing things as well that have happened recently is that uh, they have found a way to remove HIV from uh, the genetic code with the CRISPS um, technology which is a way to manipulate um, DNA and that's yeah, you can just uh, take off the bad genes and <laughs> and off you go. You're fixed, um, or the next generation fixed, depending on what it is, but uh, this is a huge improvement. Of course, there's uh, my field. <laughs> so, uh, as you can see, my field is just a small part of the fourth industrial revolution, and it's a much bigger field and, uh, and, and much, much more technology that is involved. So, of course, you have a smart factory where you can um, order something from um, the cloud on your internet with the uh, e-commerce um, WordPress site, send it to the um, manufacturer and then uh, the manufacturer has his computers that uh, put a process order to the machine floor and the machine floor uh, look at the option you have selected and so it build your system with the raw material automatically um, loaded up to the packaging and off you go freighted to you without a human have touching it and actually in real time you could pretty much with the sensors there is on the robot scene uh, where your product is on the machine floor and as well um, you can um, have something totally customized fully unique for the um, same price than um, a large production type of product this is a smart home as well there's a lot of people, I'm sure, that uh, can uh, control this and this through uh, their phone or the tablet. Dim the light and things like that. But we take that for granted, but before it was a dream for certain. <laughs> um, all the audio and things like that. You have a sandbox that's pretty good for that as well. You can uh, connect to it from anywhere you want. Check out your house, control uh, your, your things from remotely. This as well as some efforts that have been done with uh, some uh, robot made that um, give you the platter and the coffee uh, at, at the bed. Uh, can be pretty good and make you some toast. Uh, so that still need a little bit of work, but I mean, 
it's there, but I mean, for, for, for being fully functional, it need a little bit of work, but it's, it's going to come in just 10 years, you know, so it's not that far off. All, all the technology, all, all the hurdles have been overcome, now it's um, all about the uh, question to put it together. Virtual reality, that's another one. You get, uh, I don't know if you got all those box there where you just put your phone in, the, the pretty cheap actually, and, uh, and here you go, you have virtual reality. And that's going to be more and more standard and there will be an app for that. Yeah, right? it's, uh, it's a good model. The Google Glasses, where yeah, you look a bit like uh, somebody from another planet looking and checking out about what's happening around your world and have information all about it by uh, having a camera that uh, um, process your environment and uh, give you the information at which that you have uh, select to, to be triggered. And uh, as well, like for instance, there's some application with tablets and, and so forth. <laughs> cool things as well, are holograms, it's actually coming. Uh, they're there, I mean. So you can um, move around like um, car, cats. Now the the way the way you will uh, look at uh, uh, build build something for engineers. Uh, you like you more like Tony Stark's had some things and, and put something apart. So, so that, those software are starting to come. There's a, a really funny example of uh, French election that uh, one of uh, the candidate of the presidential election have uh, done a talk at eight different cities at the same time through his hologram that, uh, at the last election. I would have been bad for him, but <laughs> he had a good sense of technology. Um, so those are things as well, as, uh, they call it the dologram for educational purposes where we can have an environment where you can interact with, with the system. So all that's coming is it's not um, it's not just uh, the, uh, oh it's coming. I mean it's it's there. You know that that's have happened and and uh, the the yeah it's just it's just amazing that it's there. I found um, here it's a bit about uh, sandbots as well because it's part of the fourth industrial revolution too. And uh, where you can use it uh, in many places, uh, either in the shopping malls, in the edge care, uh, for um, um, car retailers at home, um, selling at shops. Here is uh, as a customer and service place. It's actually there. It's, uh, I think it's in um, it's one of the airport of China. Is is uh, around there. Um, shopping center telling you about all the promotions going on and what type of uh, things well, yeah, you can have in the museum um, looking for people <laughs> not moving stuff around and give you some guidance about uh, um, information <laughs> about it and kids as well as a, a really big things about kids uh, we're actually um, looking to uh, um, to work uh, with, with a few people to to provide sandbots for for schools and specialized schools as well like autistic, autism um, it was a, they, they really react really well for it and they want to learn then <laughs> don't worry about it when they see a robot they say yeah yeah we'll do anything <laughs> so another one uh, autonomous car so um, self driving car um, that's a Nissan one. This one is uh, Audi, so that's the one that I was telling you. This one, uh, I just have with the prototype one because it was looking nicer. <laughs> but, but they have uh, just a bland one with the color you want. Um, and, and here as well, they were showing us with the sensors, that's what I like, so you can see that uh, it's mainly 3D camera and inertia navigation system. A few uh, antennas, uh, so it stay connected. So basically, with not much, um, you can actually have an autonomous car and this one have been in 2017 or end of 2016 in California um, 
um, allowed to drive by itself on the road. Actually, that's all the brand that have an autonomous car. Right. So it's <laughs> it's not something that doesn't exist. Most of the ma major brands have an autonomous car, and uh, as uh, you're going to see there, Volkswagen go to the next step, and that's what the car of the future will rather look like, right? You don't need wheels anymore, do you? <laughs> Just need to be seated, cozy, and um, and have those little pods drive you around. And that's what it will be, really, and uh, I don't think we'll be that far from that. Actually, this one is existing uh, from Volkswagen, it's running and it's dry. Uh, no, not we, only with special permission that it can drive on, on the road, right? So it's just a matter of flow <laughs> when uh, people will be less scared and uh, then uh, they will um, be accepted. Artificial intelligence, of course, and uh, it's embedded in most of the things we presented. And that uh, it's uh, all in, in all the industry. And there's a few breakthrough of artificial intelligence that have happened, like um, um, Deep, uh, DeepMind from Google have uh, beat the Go player uh, quite recently, and that's much harder than uh, beating somebody. Um, on chessboard, and that had been done a decade ago. Now they make it, uh, and the, the, the way it of uh, beat it is that they didn't explain the role. They show different gameplay. The artificial intelligence software looked at it and interpreted the law, the rule from it, and then uh, play against itself for thousand and thousand of time before to start to play against a human and, uh, and that's how it worked and so you can imagine that you can apply that in anything so if you have uh, something at work you show it how it works show the exceptions and a few things um, and then uh, it, um, it will simulate it, simulate it, simulate it probably show you some case where you would decide yes, no, that's wrong when, when it's have a doubt under a certain accuracy percentage and then off it goes, and it probably would be more reliable than we do, <laughs> because they're not tired, they, they, um, and uh, they have got the time to virtually simulate practice uh, much more than us. Now they, they try to play on the uh, video game, um, they're trying to see if it can beat uh, the best player of StarCraft 2, uh, I think. Same thing, they learn the game. Nothing is explained. Other uh, uh, impressive point is uh, the artificial intelligence of them um, realize the what you call the uh, Nobel Prize experiment uh, of physics in less than an hour uh, to find the Einstein boson, and um, yeah, took us years, right? <laughs> And uh, the artificial intelligence with it, any knowledge about it, found it in an hour. So, yeah. Pretty amazing stuff nowadays as well. There's some library, you can just put a, a, a few uh, function lines together and get a really smart software. So, that's really handy for us too. Other things 3D printing and uh, 3D scanners. So, nowadays, you can buy a 3D scanner and so you say, oh, yeah, that's so good. You, you scan it and then uh, you, you put it to your 3D printer to reproduce. A lot of copyright issues there. <laughs> um, but uh, 3D printing now is not only about plastic and there's so many different methods of 3D printing. But uh, it's about food. I uh, you get a 3D, 3D printed pizza if you want to have a test. Um, there is as well a different type of shape and things like that. So for cu uh, culinary, uh, gastronomy and uh, different uh, top-notch restaurants, uh, it would be uh, quite, quite a good uh, new design system. But it, it prints in metals and all different elements, as we will see, you have seen before, like the 3D printed liver, 
print skins, print, uh, and depending on, you can multiply the number of elements and, and build up things. This one. Okay, well, as I was saying before, um, there's a real huge need for um, the, the new education, and that's uh, some example about it. And it's like uh, learning um, and dif from different places, it doesn't matter where you learn, all the um, time space, it's really different. People will become much more autonomous. Um, kids, I mean, and, and they, this will be a much more freedom about what you learn and how you learn because there's so much type of things that you can learn that there's not any more standard, it can be as well self-organized. And finally, I want to uh, give an information about actual social impact that uh, all those different industrial revolution gave you. And um, they, they're really obvious. But life expectancy, gender roles, access to food and goods, human rights, work time reduction, work safety, free time including as well having more time with your children, uh, which <laughs> wasn't something generally you were putting your children to work before because there was, you can do that and not afford anything else, you right? So <laughs> we find that we take that for granted nowadays, but it wasn't. Abolition of children labor, for instance, as well. Um, living standard have increased enormously, what we call poverty nowadays. Uh, apart where technology is not available, um, it's uh, totally different than what it was. And as well, reduction of time travel. You can go um, from here to Paris in a, a day and a half or something. You can cross the world really easily. So, thanks a lot. Um, and um, if you have any questions, uh, I will be welcome to answer them. I have a question. Um, have you seen the Terminator? Yeah. <laughs> In all seriousness, does anybody have any questions for William? We do have time for a few. Thank you. I think this is, um, having just come back from Singapore with Councillor Mayors, where we were investigating opportunities for our region and smart technology and become a smart region. I think this is a really big eye-opener for us here in Australia and in South East Queensland, um, where we saw some of those um, Asian countries take away our manufacturing businesses to provide cheaper labour. A great example, once again from Germany, was Adidas has now gone back to be uh, the shoes to be manufactured in Germany by robots because it's actually more affordable for Adidas to do that. But I guess um, it's the big, the big eye opener for me was that are we preparing our children and educating them for this future? In Singapore, certainly um, with their modified democracy, they can do that much easier than we can. But it is going to be a knowledge economy, and it's really important for our educators to start having our children think in that creative space and do that and uh, something that certainly council of mayors are looking at as well how we can advocate for that but for us in australia we're a bit isolated we think this is a long way away let me tell you singapore's a couple of hours uh, i was riding in an, auto an autonomous vehicle there are that we've met with a french company who can convert uh, buses to autonomous buses and that's going to happen by 2019 um, so we've already got autonomous vehicles here in Australia and in Western Australia I think they're doing a bit of a trial so we really have to open our mind to that and even if you're a small business there's opportunity for you in that space to start thinking differently from the norm so just wanted to thank you for that because it's bringing some of my experience um, to this group but I'm just saying it's around the corner it's across it's across the ocean and we have to start opening our minds to how we prepare ourselves for that because we feel a little bit safe here in Australia I think um, but thank you. It was more a comment than a question. I just love that sandlot because it's shorter than I am. <laughs> <laughs> um, thank you very much, William. That was tremendous and really thought-provoking. 
As you know, I'm passionate about health, so I have to ask a health question. There's a lot of concern in the more enlightened medical fraternity about electromagnetic radiation and electromagnetic fields of blue light. And I'm thinking if we're going to be you know, wearing our computers and living in them and everything else, um, are you aware of steps to reduce the EMFs and other dangers that will come with that technology? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think about this question a lot, actually. So, uh, it's a very good question. And um, look, like a lot of technology, these um, they are put on the market prior to be able to test them as a long-term effect on the body, and um, we are already affected by that. All the waves that we are through. Uh, if you if you would see all the different waves that are transmitted, uh, I couldn't I couldn't see you. <laughs> there, there will be so much around and and all that pass through our body and uh, do have an effect of vibration on our cells and uh, they're not made to be vibrant this way and of course um, uh, there can be some uh, breakdown like if you check something uh, really quickly and that's what the electromagnetic as well uh, does. Okay, I think there's a real serious effect about it. Uh, I think uh, Wi-Fi creates a lot of cancer. I think there's a, a lot of technology in our day that um, are um, affecting us but um, I cannot see any um, issue except uh, I mean issue uh, any um, exit to that we we are too deeply involved into it uh, and uh, I just uh, more trust um, more than nature to uh, from generation to generation being actually become immune uh, to those type of technology because and, and that's what's happened, but in this, it's a, it's a trade-off, right? In one way, we are actually living longer because of this technology that can repair us and all that. In the other way, uh, we get more like, how you say, outgrowth and things like that, be, uh, of, like cancers and, and, and things like that because of this technology. So it's kind of a symbiosis system. I think in the long term we do live longer, um, but look, drinking from a bottle of plastic is really bad. Uh, there's a lot of things that we are doing that are unhealthy um, in a way, but we still live longer because um, all the technology advantage and, and uh, sanity uh, around it help us. But I, I think it's a really, really um, um, big topic and um, yeah, it's, uh, it's hard to find a, a, a direct answer but that's, that's my point of view anyway. Oh, yeah, right. Okay. Stand there. Yeah. 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 Um, what we're finding is that a lot of young people are loving playing games and interacting with uh, the internet in that way. Um, they seem to be really blinded to how they're going to engage with the future. So if you had a 15-year-old and you were trying to direct them as to how to prepare for the future, no, because schools, not all schools, some of our schools are doing amazing work in this area, but the majority of schools aren't talking about this yet. What sort of a conversation would you have about how they can prepare for this future? Uh, thanks for this question. Actually, it's, uh, it's another subject I have to help, and uh, we are working with uh, different uh, um, insti like site institutes, and uh, uh, we actually uh, probably want to speak to with TAFE as well, and uh, we're working with QUT and Bond University about um, giving a new, different way of education. I, I already believe in uh, internships and we, we always take intense people and as well uh, uh, 10 years uh, work experience uh, in our company. Uh, and the, the things is, what I would say to this person, um, uh, I would say uh, try to find what you like. And one, you cannot find what you like if you stay at school unless you want just to be a teacher. Uh, you have to go in the environment 
uh, that uh, you think you like. And so once you are in the environment that you think you like, then you can have an assessment to see if you actually appreciate it or not. And the only way to do so is will be to, um, how you say, democratize a bit more the internship uh, and, and uh, make them starting much earlier and have a much more flexible way um, to, to teach. Uh, I come from a technical um, school um, point of view and really if I would have taken the general um, courses, um, I would have been there today. I may not have found what I love today. Um, I work from my passion and uh, that's um, something I had to experiment with and, 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 and look through it. So somebody that search itself like a 15 years old don't know what to do. Um, I say try to do projects, play around. Um, don't listen to necessarily other people think it's best for you because uh, everybody is different and everybody have uh, different needs and uh, we, we are our only best person to know what's best for us. And so, yeah, it really just takes the courage to, to experiment by yourself and take actions. So when I talked about our year twos are doing that, we, um, a couple of years ago, unfortunately had a very sick girl at our college. So we had a robot that wasn't quite as pretty looking as your C-bot here, but it was an iPad that she had in the hospital and then it remotely was at the college where it was on a stand and she controlled that and went from class to class with her classmates and it lowered when they were in the classroom, so she had the same trajectory in the classroom that the other students did. And then it rose up and walked around the playground so she could still sit and interact with them. And that was a beautiful thing for us to, to provide. The other thing that we have is our year um, five and six students last year, for the very first time, entered the International Space Design Competition and the International Robotics Competition. So these are things that the students are doing in a curriculum sense, but also they're choosing to do that as a club. And that, um, for us, is getting bigger and bigger. And the last school holidays, we ran a Young Inventors workshop, which was based around robotics and drones. And that was for everybody throughout Brisbane, not just our college. So we're recognising the fact that it's not only providing for our students, but it's something that everybody is looking forward towards. And also when you talked about the hologram, we have a year 11 student in business that produced a product that he is um, now selling internationally to businesses. So when they have events such as this, um, they have their hologram floating above their table as a sponsorship deal. And he's still in year 11 at our college. So these are things that are driven by the students and we need to embrace and support them coming through because they're asking 
this sort of technology and this sort of industrial revolution that we're talking about. So thank you. Thank you. Robots can replace a lot of the automated things, but what about the relationship part of it? Where do you see people to people fitting in the future? Yeah, that's, that's actually going to be the big thing. That's where people are going to be. And, and really, um, again, I don't think robots are there to replace people. They are there to assist people or to do the bad work that uh, was uh, um, and safe. I, I think people want to speak to people and that's what we are here and you will see as well in the business uh, why we do business networking. Uh, the main reason is despite all this technology, despite that you can have any company at the tip of the finger nowadays, you still want to see somebody face to face to make a decision. And I think that's really embedded to human being and it will always stay. And that's why I say that uh, that's where most of the other job is going to be more uh, elaborated and created. Um, so those are uh, big guns for, for the future jobs and there will be actually more extra services towards people. Thanks, William. Uh, round of applause, please. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Nothing is removed, it's transformed, all right? I love that. And honestly, William, you could tell me anything in that accent, and I'll die. <laughs> <laughs> anything. We need to talk. <laughs> <laughs> as far as autonomous cars go, anything's going to be safe at the day.